The Missing Diamond. Hey guys, our wonderful world can offer a lot of different intriguing and ambiguous stories. People did their best to contribute their stories to the shared pool of human experience. Some are mysterious, others are filled with inexplicable oddities, and others are just mind-boggling. Let us tell you a story which is all of the above and maybe even a little more. Motorsports enthusiasts and those closely following Formula One races must have heard about this incident. But this story might come as a surprise for those of us who aren't into racing and have heard about the pre-Schumacher, Vettel, and Senna only by accident. So what is the story going to be about? Well, we're going to talk to you about how you can smash an expensive car in just one race circle, lose a $300,000 worth gemstone, and puzzle everyone with the question, what the hell was that? This incredible story involves a racetrack incident, PR geniuses, real Hollywood actors, two huge diamonds, and a whole lot of human carelessness. Or perhaps the tricks of PR and marketing experts. Check it out for yourself and come to your own conclusions. Formula One is one of the most popular annual circuit races in the world. To suit the level of the event, everything has to be very serious. Strict technical regulations, qualifications, safety rules, Grand Prix and many other words and terms that might be unclear to a regular person. So from 2000 to 2004, the Jaguar racing team played in the F1 World Championships. Yes, you guessed that right, they represented Jaguar Cars Automaker, but if you dig deeper, you'll find out it was originally the Stewart Grand Prix team from Britain but Ford bought it in the late 1990s. Formula One has been and remains a great place to promote car brands. Well, Ford decided to buy a team and call it Jaguar to promote that brand, a fail-safe plan. Moreover, Jaguar had a whole department that produced civil sports cars. And by the way, for those of you who thought, wait, what are you talking about? What does Ford have to do with it if Jaguar comes from Britain? Guys, you're a bit behind the times. Back in 1990, Jaguar became Ford's brand, and now its rights belong to the Indians, or rather the Indian company Tata Motors. So let's get back to racing. Despite the fact that Jaguar Racing applied to take part in Formula One, the guys did not achieve mind-blowing success, at least under the Jaguar brand. But motorsports fans will surely remember them for a long time, albeit not for their sporting achievements. Formula One races take place in different parts of the world. One of the places that regularly hosts these competitions is the Principality of Monaco, and the Grand Prix race is considered the most prestigious in Monaco. That is, if you won the Monaco Grand Prix on the Monte Carlo track, that's it, you've reached ultimate Formula One coolness. The venue is simply teeming with glamour and a wealthy public. Everything is said by the word Monaco. There are 10 times more super yachts at the berths than ordinary boats. The ladies in chic outfits are strolling here and there. You can easily meet crowds of celebrities and the cream of society. So for the pilots, these F1 races were like the best treat ever, a treat everyone wanted to snatch. But the Monaco Grand Prix is not only known for being expensive and glamorous, it's also one of the most difficult tracks in Formula One. This track in Monte Carlo has been unforgiving to pilots' mistakes. If you look at the Formula One cars, you'll notice they're pasted over not only with brands of the automaker the team represents, but also with the symbols of sponsors and advertisers. This is an old practice, which is quite normal. As you know, advertising contracts also bring in a lot of cash. Each team has a whole department that deals with advertising and public relations. And if the Jaguar racing team didn't reach incredible heights in the race itself, then these guys succeeded in PR and marketing. In some ways, just thanks to this story we're about to tell you. The PR division of the Jaguar racing team was headed by a talent and expert, Navis Sidhu. He decided not to limit himself to some car stickers and went one step further. As one of the strategies, he began to cover premier events in film distribution, acting as a partner in film projects and inviting Hollywood stars to the Grand Prix. In 2003, Nav Sidhu timed his team's performance to the premiere of Terminator 3. Of course, he invited Arnold Schwarzenegger himself as a special guest and painted the cars appropriately. This publicity stunt did its magic, but we are not at all interested in Terminators, The Rise of the Machine, or Judgment Day. We are interested in another movie character, namely Danny Ocean and his 12 crazy friends. All right, let's explain everything. In 2004, the owners of Jaguar Racing started to put pressure on the team's management as they needed a high result which for some reason wasn't there, and it was necessary to somehow revive the team. Nav Sidhu thought that some good PR certainly wouldn't hurt, and decided to go about things the way he always went about them, but this time he just outperformed himself. Jaguar Racing has agreed to collaborate with Ocean's 12 film crew. Yes, that's the same film from the famous trilogy where a team of talented thieves goes on a robbery in desperate hopes of stealing the Imperial Fabergé Coronation egg. 
a film that grossed over $350 million at the box office. Nav Sadu invited the Hollywood stars who played the main characters, George Clooney, Brad Pitt, and Matt Damon for the race in Monaco, and it was a success. But Nav Sadu's plan didn't stop there. If you want to promote something, promote it properly. So, where there is a story about robbers, a story with diamonds will fit perfectly. And the promoters decided to place two diamonds on two cars of the Jaguar racing team. Each was worth $300,000. From that moment on, everything went wrong. Although, who knows these PR people and what they're up to. The Israeli company Steinmetz provided two expensive iPod-sized diamonds for the promotion. These were two really hefty diamonds, and this is not a joke, but where they decided to place them doesn't make much sense at all. The diamonds were attached to the car's very noses, the most unsafe place imaginable. Needless to say, the track in Monte Carlo is very dangerous, and accidents happen often. No wonder Steinmetz was laughed at by the insurance companies they addressed to insure their gems. So that day, two Jaguar racing cars driven by pilots Christian Klein and Mark Webber became more expensive by $300,000 each. To sum it up, two uninsured, insanely expensive gems put on the very nose of two unrealistically fast cars that are about to rush at speeds of almost 200 miles per hour along the most dangerous track in the Monaco Grand Prix. What could possibly go wrong? And then, came the much-anticipated Sunday on May 23, 2004. There was beautiful weather, luxurious atmosphere, wealthy guests, and Hollywood stars in the stands. The air was filled with glamour. Everything was ready for the start of the most prestigious Formula One race. Another moment and the racing car's engines would take their pilots along the track. The first circle in auto racing is considered one of the most accident-prone. It is in the first round that a fierce struggle usually starts. Race cars rush and turn wing to wing, wheel to wheel. Well, what do you think happened next? After a series of contacts with rivals, one of the diamond cars of the Jaguar racing team, driven by Christian Klein, flew into the fence on the very first circle as the pilot failed to follow one of the Monte Carlo track's famous sharp turns. Of course, there was a lot of fuss, as one would expect. Security officers ran and a yellow flag was waved at the turn near the accident site. In this way, F1 pilots are warned of the danger ahead. Everything was as it should have been, but there was one but. A whole fortune was hidden in the very tip of this racing car that just smashed into the fence. Now, fortunately, the pilot wasn't injured and was promptly evacuated from the accident site. The Formula One track marshals and Monaco did everything perfectly and by the book. It seems that according to regulations, no one from the Jaguar racing team was allowed near the accident site for two hours. Can you imagine the feelings of Navasa do? You sit like this and can't do anything. They won't let you in, and there, perhaps among the rubble and all the track workers, lies a diamond the size of a horse's head worth 300 grand. Nav Sadu said in an interview immediately after the accident that the first thing he was worried about was, of course, the pilot's health. Do you think he was lying? But now, the allotted time had passed, and Jaguar racing employees were allowed to visit the crash site and look for the diamond. Now, don't worry, everything ended exactly as it should have in such circumstances. Naturally, the diamond went missing, and nobody has ever found it. The news made headlines at the time, even in newspapers that had nothing to do with motorsports. Nav Sadu's promotion was as successful as one could have imagined. He himself said that his phone was flooded with incoming calls after the race. The Jaguar racing team had its epic fail moment. As a matter of fact, it was the last Grand Prix for their team. Imagine what a powerful advertising campaign this was for Ocean's 12. We can safely say that this very Jaguar racing team story has contributed to the $350 million box office. And here's another plot twist for you. The diamond costs $300,000, which is quite a lot, but do you know what? how much a racing car costs? $100,000, $150,000? Just the nose dome that hid the diamond was worth $200,000. According to rough calculations run in 2019 and 2020, a race car can cost as much as $17 million. It's clear that only the team knows the details, but we can still try and give a rough estimate. The gearbox alone cost between 300 and 400 grand. Soon, the Jaguar racing team was sold to Red Bull GmbH. Their newly created team included mostly the same members as Jaguar Racing, but became known as Red Bull Racing. There are some more interesting facts. For example, Benny Steinmetz, the owner of the company that gave the diamonds, was charged with bribery and sent to jail. And doesn't it seem strange and even funny to you that a company from Israel, the best country at counting money, ventured into this crazy adventure with no insurance? In addition, the turn in which the accident occurred is one of the slowest turns on a track, and it's highly unlikely that one would smash themselves and the car to smithereens there. If you watch the video of the accident, the pilot drove into the guardrail unnaturally carefully. Now, we don't want to say anything, but this does get us thinking a little bit. Be that as it may. This is a perfect story for fans of action-packed conspiracy theories, even despite the fact that the whole thing comes off as being staged by the PR company. At least, the fact that the diamond theft happened to a team that collaborated with a movie about talented thieves should say something. 
Could the story and the subsequent publicity be staged to attract the attention of big players like Red Bull? Why not? And also just recently, Mark Webber, the former pilot of the Jaguar racing team, whose car remained intact, has allegedly said that the diamonds weren't even real. He said so in one of his interviews, but no one knows for sure whether what he said is true. This case is absolutely incredible. The attention that the Jaguar racing team managed to draw is unprecedented. Utmost human carelessness, or a beautiful fairy tale. You decide which. And yes, if you suddenly find yourself near Monte Carlo, look carefully under your feet. You never know.